Everybody, welcome to Monday Worth Thursday Worship. I'm David Anderson. I'm pastor at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church in Grand Rapids at Minnesota. I apologize for this delay. It seems that some people are able to hear me and see me on Facebook Live as they check in right now, and other people are not. Uh, I will go forward with this. I'm recording this also, and will do my best to load it uh, to Facebook as soon as we are done here. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, if you have a candle, we'll light those candles in just a moment. Uh, if uh, you have a basin of water, today is Monday, Thursday, and we will not be washing feet unless you want to, but we will be washing hands as a ritual act of how we love one another, especially in this day and age of a pandemic. I uh, thank you for your patience and your, um, your grace as I am... Uh, as we're learning our way into this. Uh, if you are on Facebook and you are able to see me, you could help by creating a watch party. You could share this and underneath the, the video, you can hit share and then uh, create watch party. That way you will be letting your friends know that you are watching this right now. Also, please find the link for the virtual friendship pad and prayer request form. Fill that out. We want to know you're worshiping here, and we want to know how we can pray for you. Um, there's also going to be a link there for our donate page. Uh, it's so important in this time that we continue supporting the work of our congregation so that we uh, can continue reaching out, doing things like this, and being the body of Christ that we are called to be in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. So thank you for your donations. A reminder that the church building is right now closed to all activities. That includes worship right now. That includes worship and meetings uh, until... May 11th. Uh, until then, everything else we're going to be trying to do uh, remotely using technology such as Zoom and Facebook. That includes church council meetings, other meetings, Bible studies, and um, youth groups. So if you have questions about that, you can always call the staff. If you call the church office and you listen to the voicemail, you'll hear our cell phone or our home numbers, and you can call us when appropriate. Um, Tomorrow is Good Friday, and I welcome you back to Facebook Live at 6 o'clock. Hopefully, we'll figure out what's going on with these uh, technology issues. And then Easter Sunday, we gather again uh, in community at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I want to share this screen now so that you can see what, uh, what is coming up, and that is not the screen that you needed to see. Uh, this is. <laughs> So we will continue with worship now. Again, a welcome as we gather in community online here on Facebook. And if you are watching this on YouTube there as well, I invite you in your home now to light your candle. It is a, uh, it symbolizes that we are gathering intentionally in the presence of Jesus Christ. And we acknowledge that Jesus is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. We continue now with confession and forgiveness. Together, let us pray. You call us to be your voices in this world, and we stay silent. You call us to be your hands in this world, and we keep them hidden. You call us to be your feet in this world, and we go our own way. When we meet those who are doubting and say nothing, forgive us. When we meet those who need your touch and do nothing, forgive us. When we are called to take up your cross and carry nothing, forgive us. Breathe life into these bones. Bring freedom to these lives that we might declare with heart and soul and voice that you are our Lord and our God. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, 
I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life and faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Psalm 116, and this is a responsive reading. Please join in the bold print. I love the Lord, who has searched my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaiden. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem, word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Together, let us pray. God of mercy and compassion, through the passion and resurrection of your Son, you have freed us from the bonds of sin and death. Be with us on our pilgrimage that we may offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving, fulfill our vows, and glorify you in the presence of all your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel, according to John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to them, him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and, and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. 
for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you should love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It was kind of like a children's sermon with an object lesson. Jesus was gathered with his closest friends in that upper room of a home in Jerusalem. They were there to celebrate the Passover meal, a meal that remembered and celebrated how God had acted to rescue his people from the dead and lives they were living as slaves in Egypt. It remembered the beginning of the Exodus event, the, the rescue event, the deliverance. They sang together, they prayed together, they read scripture together, and they ate together. And then the object lesson. Jesus got up from the table. He got a basin of water and a towel, and he knelt down to wash his followers' feet. And there must have been a collective gasp. Washing feet was the task reserved for the lowest of the lowest level of servant. And Jesus... Well, that wasn't him. He was the host of this meal. He was the leader, right? But Jesus washed their feet. Their dirty, stinky, cracked feet, which had spent days, weeks, maybe months, walking in the dusty roads of Galilee and now down to Jerusalem. And Jesus did this. Jesus did this as a way of caring for and serving and loving his friends. But it was weird. Kind of like the president of the United States serving tables at the next state dinner after, or at the White House after this pandemic. Kind of below the position of president. At least it's something he was hosting. But apparently, not below Jesus' position. Because the God of Jesus Christ is the one who always comes down in love. In the beginning, God came down and walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the Garden of Eden. And it was a relationship of love. Fast forward to Jesus. I know I just skipped a lot, but fast forward to Jesus. And once again, we hear, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God came down as Jesus out of love and to serve. 
And then on the day of Pentecost now, God the Holy Spirit came down with a rush of a mighty wind and with fire, and God filled those fearful disciples with power and with ability so that God's message of love and God's call to love and serve all would be heard by all. After the object lesson was over, we turn to the application part. Now, in our children's sermon that we do as part of worship, we hope that the kids will understand part of this application section, but we really hope that the adults in the room get it. It's usually shorter and more to the point than at least my sermons are. And here it is. Just as Jesus loved us, just as Jesus demonstrated love to us, we are to love one another and to demonstrate love to one another. See it? The object lesson of washing feet points us to the commandment now that Jesus gave, the mandatum in Latin of Monday Thursday. Here's the commandment. Love one another. As a commandment, it's not an option, right? We are to love. The words we use are to be used with love. The actions that we take are to be done with love. How we relate to people from, from the other side of the aisle or from the other side of the tracks is to be done with love attitudes, suspicions, and judgments about or against the other are simply out of line. Now, I, like you, see it every day in the news, right? Politicians, public officials, and all the news commentators that we have lashing out against those they disagree with. They're finger pointing, they're mocking, and they're taunting. That's not love. And it happens closer to home, too, right? Around friends, our friends, and our acquaintances, our co-workers, and our relatives. In our banter, we tear others down rather than living and speaking in love and building people up with compassion and love. This is my commandment, that you are to love one another. So how do, we, how do we love? How do we love right now, especially when we are, at least most of us, staying at home? And maybe, that, maybe that's one answer, right? We stay at home. So we do not unknowingly spread the threat of COVID-19 to friends or our parents or people we know who might be vulnerable but also so that we do not spread disease or the threat of disease to those we do not know. And we do so out of love. We do not gather together out of love. We wash our hands again and again out of love for the other. We use sanitizer out of love for the other. We are now asked to wear masks and gloves out of love for the other when we go out to buy food. So we do not widen that circle of disease sharing. Well, you might say, I'm healthy. Well, yeah, maybe. But maybe it's just that you don't have symptoms but you are nevertheless, I don't know, contagious or carrying the virus to people who are not so healthy. Love one another. Stay home. Can you tell that I'm married to a public health nurse? Well, that's just the most immediate example that came to mind. We are called to love is a lifestyle, always, pandemic or no pandemic. And why? Because that's how Jesus lived. And that's how Jesus calls his followers to live. And we love 
because God first loved us. Hear this. God loves you unconditionally. Yes, hear that. God loves you abundantly. Believe that. God's love and acceptance of you is without strings and knows no bounds. Let that shape you and change you and guide you. And know, know that God fills you with God's Holy Spirit, strengthening you and leading you and giving you the courage and the means to love one another, to love and serve God by loving and serving others. Yes, God loves you and all people, no exceptions. That's what kept him on that road that led to the cross. He loved and loves you and everyone so much that he would not not live his life of a servant all the way to the cross. His love for you and for everyone led him there and held him there. Because of his love for you and for all, Jesus endured and took on all the hate and sin, the betrayal and denial that the world and you and I could throw at him. And because of love, God's great love. God raised Jesus from the dead. You see, not even death could hold back God's love. My friends, you are surrounded by and filled by and sustained by the love of God. And tonight again, our Lord calls us, no, commands us, mandates us to live in this love and to live this love as we love one another. Let me end with a question and then some silence for you to ponder quietly for a moment or discuss with, with whomever you might be with tonight. What can you do to show love and to share love?
obviously I am I don't have the entire song here, but what a beautiful rendition of Yezu Yezu by Sarah Mason. I'm so glad that she consented to put this video together for us. Let me see if I can get out of this slide. That's not where I wanted. There we go. My apologies. We're going to continue now with a hand washing ritual as we live lives of love. And as I said moments ago, one of the ways that in this pandemic, at least, and now probably beyond, as we're hearing that we need to do this more and more, one of the ways that we can love one another and keep ourselves and others safe out of love is by washing our hands frequently and washing them well. On Monday, Thursday, normally or very often, it is a tradition to have a, a ritual of foot washing because literally that's what Jesus did with his disciples as an act of love. If you would like to wash one another's feet tonight, please do. I'm suggesting that we um, re image our hand washing as an act of love. On this night, we have heard our Lord's commandment to love one another as he has loved us. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. Jesus' own example of humble, loving service was washing the feet of his friends. Tonight, I invite you to use a bowl in your home and to wash your hands and perhaps the hands of those in your gathering. In this time of pandemic, washing our hands is a concrete way of loving others as we strive to keep everyone safe. As we take a moment to wash our hands, I'm going to attempt to play a music video by Graham Kendrick. Graham Kendrick is the composer of the song Shine, Jesus Shine, which is in our hymnal. But he's also the composer of this song. I hope I have it all here. Um, here, here we go. I'm going to... Let's wash our hands.
united with Christians around the globe on this Monday Thursday. Let us pray for the church and the troubled world and all in need, responding to each petition with the words, Your mercy is great. Blessed are you, holy God, for the church. Gather all the baptized around your presence in the word. Strengthen the body of your people, even when we cannot assemble for worship in person. Grant bishops, pastors, deacons, musicians, and all worship leaders in faithfulness and creativity for their ministry in this time. Hear us, holy God. Your mercy is great. Blessed are you, sovereign God, for all our nation. Inspire all people to live in peace and concord. Grant wisdom and courage to heads of state and to legislators as they face the coronavirus. Lead our elected officials to champion the cause of the needy. We pray especially for U.S. President Trump and his administration and Minnesota Governor Walz and his administration. Hear us, sovereign God. Your mercy is great. Blessed are you, faithful God. For you accompany suffering humanity with love. Abide wherever the coronavirus has struck. Visit all who mourn their dead all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear the present and the future. Support physicians, nurses, and home health aides, medical researchers, and the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control, and the Minnesota Department of Health. Hear us, faithful God. Your mercy is great. Blessed are you, gracious God, for you care for the needy. Work through us to feed the hungry, protect the refugee, embrace the distressed, house the homeless, nurse the sick, and comfort the dying. Hear us, gracious God. Your mercy is great. Blessed are you, loving God, that your Son knelt before us, your unworthy servants. Preserve our lives. Comfort our anxiety. And receive now the petitions of our hearts.
Hear us, loving God. Your mercy is great. Receive, merciful God, our prayers. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who died and rose, that we might live with you now and forever. Amen. We'll have a time of offering. Uh, perhaps you've seen a link on Facebook that you could click. It's the same link, I believe, as I have right here. It will take you to our um, website. It will take you to our secure page for giving. Or if you want to be fancy, you could take your smartphone and snap a picture or scan uh, this QR code. That's a quick, it's called quick response code. Uh, always you could take this time to, to uh, prepare a check or, a, or an envelope. And I thank you for your generosity um, in this uncertain time when we as a church uh, are uncertain about our future as well. Um, our offerings and money. Money is an engine that makes things possible in our economy and in our culture. It's not the only engine. The Holy Spirit is the engine, but it's an engine. And as we uh, are preparing our offerings, I invite you to uh, join in singing. Uh, I'm going to start playing, and maybe I'll be able to click and listen to some words. Healer of boundless compassion, peace for our suffering hearts, anoint us with health, embrace us with strength and bring us to fullness of life. Healer of boundless compassion, peace for our suffering hearts, anoint us with hands. Embrace us with strength and bring us to fullness of life. Healer of boundless compassion, peace for our suffering hearts, anoint us with health. Embrace us with strength and bring us to fullness of life. Healer of boundless compassion, peace for our suffering hearts, anoint us with health. Embrace us with strength and bring us to fullness of life. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Continue with thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. 
By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call, to, and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, and a way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our final hymn is, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. And though I didn't get it in on this slide, I want to thank Cheryl Young for playing this and singing this and recording this with her iPhone and uploading it to a Dropbox. There's a whole bunch of steps, but Cheryl, thank you uh, very much. Let me see if I can... It's a little bit different here, and of course it's not there. There she is. If I can move me down here. Here we go. And I want to stop it because I cannot hear her right now. And I don't know why. As I can see it right there. I think we'll get it now. Let's try this again. I think we've got it. Oh, 
And finally, now remembering Jesus going to his arrest and his death, the events from which all the mercy that fills this night flows. We read Psalm 88 together. Traditionally, this is when the altar would be stripped and we would leave in silence. Lord God of my salvation, by day I cry out, even at night before you, let my prayer reach you. Turn your ear to my outcry because my whole being is filled with distress. My life is at the very brink of hell. I am considered as one of those plummeting into the pit. I am like those who are beyond help, drifting among the dead, lying in the grave like dead bodies, those you don't remember anymore, those who are cut off from your power. You placed me down in the deepest pit, in places dark and deep. Your anger smothers me. You subdue me with it wave after wave. You've made my friends distant. You've made me disgusting to them. I can't escape. I'm trapped. My eyes are tired of looking at my suffering. I've been calling out to you every day, Lord. I've had my hands outstretched to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Do ghosts rise up and give you thanks? Is your faithful love proclaimed in the grave? Your faithfulness in the underworld? Are your wonders known in the land of darkness? Your righteousness in the land of oblivion? But I cry out to you, Lord. My prayer meets you first thing in the morning. Why do you reject my very being, Lord? Why do you hide your face from me? Since I was young, I've been afflicted. I've been dying. I've endured your terrors. I'm lifeless. Your fiery anger has overwhelmed me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day long like water. They engulf me completely. You've made my loved ones and companions distant. My only friend is darkness. 